Okay, guys, uh, let's talk about the parable of the seeds. I'm specifically going to focus on Mark 4, um, 4.13 to 20, which is the explanation of it from the Lord. It does exist in Matthew and Luke as well. They all say the same thing. I think uh, Mark is a little bit more clear than the others, but only only slightly so. Again, they say, they tell the same story, and if we look at the Greek, they're all um, they're all again pointing to the exact same facts and factors. So, verse thirteen. Then Jesus said to them, "Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. The farmer is whoever is giving the word, whether it's." a TV channel, whether it's, you know, an evangelist in your face, whether it's your friend evangelizing you indirectly, whether it's any type of information coming at you one way or another that the Lord superintends, um, that involves coming to understand that Jesus Christ is God, man, and his death saves you, period, okay? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. So path itself is worn down soil. It's been packed. It's been, it's been, it's been pressed upon so much that nothing can penetrate it, whether it's covered in rock, whether it's just beat down earth itself. Um, the picture is the seed, even if it had a chance to, you know, gain some moisture and grow root, it would never have anywhere to cling on and dig down deep. Um, this omits the idea that the seed itself has any say, but it's very much talking about people. People are endowed with free will, the image of God. So it's very much to be understood. And I don't think there's any way to look at this otherwise, that these types are the, the, the soil and the seed itself. The combination is, is like explaining the condition of the heart, right? Yeah. Imagine a more, a more hardened heart hearing these words. Once they've already determined that that's not possible or they've already rejected, like, you know, everyday factual evidence that they can see from natural revelation. See my video on natural revelation for more on that. They're already in a position where they're likely to reject the word no matter how it's put to them. And although it does say that Satan comes and takes it away, Satan's taking it away by offering them a replacement. It's not just a simple matter of him coming along and Yoink, you can't have it. They're literally given the word because God loves us all. And we see that all throughout the word that his goal is to save every human being. So anybody who hears the word that Satan takes it away from, it's that Satan has already either offered them something that has hardened over their heart enough that they're going to reject it outright, or they hear it and he comes along and, and, and you know, appeals to them in, in one way or another, some sophistry, some, some sophistry, some, um, some point of view, some, I don't know, bringing up the memory of a, of a relative who was overly judgmental or whatever that left a bad taste in their mouth, whatever the situation may be. Satan is not just coming and taking it away. The seed itself is the potential for faith and growth. He is, he is, he is taking it away by replacing it and offering a different solution that is not a real solution at all. Obviously, it's, it's a lie, but um, that's the whole picture there. It's not just a simple matter of Satan comes and makes it impossible for them. Satan already went out of his way to give them something that they chose to replace any potential for the word to penetrate at all before that seed ever hit the ground, unfortunately. That's why it's hard-packed soil. I think the picture there is clear. Others, like the seed sown on rocky places, this is verse 16, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time, when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. So I don't know if you guys have ever grown anything, uh, but the more overexposure to air and underexposure to water that a root gets with a seed, the more likely it is to dry out. So the picture is, you know, water of the word, book of John, um, actually all throughout the word, honestly, the, the water of the word, see my video on the water of the word. The water of the word is the word of God. It's the Bible itself. So these people hear the word, they understand that they're saved, they, they get all the initial joy. They actually tend, in my experience, to be the ones that are most joyful about receiving the word, but because they don't go out of their way to learn it, or you know, they accepted some very lukewarm, very weak, um, non-biblical explanation for things, again, not the Bible, they're basing their faith on a hope that life is, like, for example, going to be easy, or that you know, they're, they're going to get that promotion or they're going to get that girl. Or they're going to have that job. You know, they're, they're, they're basing, they're basing their expectations of God on worldly things and not on what's in the Bible. Because if they were to just sit down and give it just even a little bit, 
of attention, they would quickly understand that those who follow him will be persecuted. We're supposed to pick up our cross. We're supposed to make sacrifices. We're supposed to put him first. Otherwise, it opens us up to all manner of nonsense from the devil. And in this case, trouble or persecution comes because of the word. In other words, because of the word that they refuse to root themselves in, they immediately blame God for it and they hightail it out of town. This is literally apostatization. This is this is the act of divorcing themselves from the Lord. This, I believe, happens more often than we care to admit. Uh, this also puts the lie to the once saved, always saved thing. Again, going to keep saying it. That's nonsense. Um, but this is this is a very high percentage of people that actually come to understand the Lord and yet still leave him. And it's all to do with the fact that that seed never had a chance because although it had plenty of air, it did not have any water and the water was absolutely imperative for its growth, just like with any good seed planted in good ground. Okay. Verse 18, still others like seeds sown among the thorns, hear the word, but the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Unfortunately, this, in my opinion, is the majority of believers that have ever or will ever exist. This is the believer who doesn't stay on the path. They're, this is the believer who becomes, you know, so involved in their own life that either they have no time for it whatsoever or they've allowed Satan to come in and, allow, and, and, and give them the thought that it's okay to live sinfully, basically okay to live in a gentilic manner. Um, these are the ones that are always trying to make friends with the world but never really able to give up the, uh, the faith that they have. Again, going back to my experience in growing vegetables and whatnot, you know, if you have a plant that gets no sunlight, if you have a plant that gets very little water, although it gets enough to live, you have this pathetic, spindly looking mess, essentially, that doesn't really look anything like the good crop that you may or may not have beside it because it lacked so many factors. But in this case, obviously, the seed, the plant, all these things, these involve free will, right? So it's not just something that's happening to it from an outside source. This is all these are all willful decisions made by the person represented by the plant that stops them from ever bearing any fruit except for their own salvation. Again, I am convinced that this is the mass majority of believers that have ever or will ever exist. And based upon how unfortunately free free will is, this makes the most amount of sense to me. Obviously, you know, this person is saved and we can be thankful for that, but that doesn't necessarily mean this is anything we should ascribe ourselves to. We should not, we should not view this as good enough. Again, I will always say it's better to be a doorman in heaven than it is to be a king in hell because they're, they're all going to burn no matter what. But in my opinion, this is an absolute darn near complete waste of a life. Darn near. Just a little bitty bit. They're going to be saved, yes. Um, but it does also mean that they gave up any chance at eternal reward. They likely had a difficult life anyway because the devil is always after them trying to turn them into the seed on the rock. So... It, it, it seems a waste, if you will. This was wasted talent. This was wasted soil. This was wasted water because they knew something of the word and they were never so dishonest with themselves so as to fully reject the Lord. But they're also dishonest enough with themselves to live like an unbeliever, essentially, and uh, destroy any ability to grow close to him, to learn the word, grow in the word, come into their ministry and do something great in the Lord's name to the Lord's honor, to their credit for eternal reward. So this is something to never, ever, ever, ever want to be like, guys. And again, I'm sad to say this is the majority of believers everywhere, period. All right. Verse 20. Others, like the seed grown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, or even 100 times what was sown. This one kind of speaks for itself, um, but it even speaks to a hierarchy among those who decide to become good soil. As long as... As long as there is free will, variability, and again, I just talked about the talents and the minas, there is still going to be various levels of gifts, various levels of will, even among the good soil, as it's called. Um, I, I tell this to people all the time. Any time that you're brought up against a truth in the Bible that could potentially offend you or make you have to think that you need to change something drastically in your life and you fight it, the longer you fight it, the longer you're making yourself potentially lesser in level from where you could be. I am a great example of this, guys. I waited 40 years. This is my 40th year to actually get my act together. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not even that I couldn't have done this before. I probably could have. Maybe this was the time in my life where he knew I would, and this is just the, the time to do the thing. But 
I really wished I would have done this a lot earlier. I really wish that I could honestly say that I know, and honestly, none of us really know when and, and where and how um, we are to really excel in the Lord and whether or not we could ever even get close to that hundred times what was sown output. But that that's my wish. That's what I want. I want that top level. I really do. You know, um, there's any number of ways that this can happen. Everybody has different gifts and different ministries. So as long as as long as you hit the ground running and never quit, this is possible. This no way, please don't let me don't let me detour you either. The the parable of the prodigal son was there for a reason. I'm certain that the whole goal in that parable was to say not only was my lo my son lost and found, but now he's able to do my will, hear it, and, and and go and help others do the same. So, as long as there's life, there's breath. That also applies. As long as there's breath, there's a chance. Rather, um, that also applies to believers as far as their ability to move on from whatever level they're currently at of production on to greater and greater heights. A lot of it, almost all of it comes from sheer desire because the spirit can make anything happen, right? So if you have this burning desire inside of you to be like this, first off, good on you because this is the least likely of all types of believers. And you have every ability to grab a hold of his word, bring it down deep inside you, never let it go, build upon it, right? And, and, and gain these rewards. You're more and more useful to God. You're a, you're, a, you're a more and more sharp tool. Because of free will, it's not that God can't do anything. It's that he's giving you the opportunity to choose whether or not to suck up all that, that water of the word, to become that effective weapon in his hand, right? Again, God could take a rusty, a rusty nothing, turn it into a super sword. But in this case, because of free will, because of the ability to be rewarded, and because he desires for us to desire him in return, we are the ones given the responsibility as to whether or not we're going to be this, you know, gigantic broadsword, Thracian monster of a weapon, or if we're going to be like a trowel that's kind of rusty that, yeah, you can do some work with it, but sort of dull, can't really cut anything with it and so on. So you get, I hope you get the picture. The spectrum, even amongst those of the good soil, the ones that receive it, never let it go and do keep trying is still very great. 30 times is awesome, 60 times is way better, 100 times sounds like you're going to have a really nice plot really close to the Lord, very high up on the mountain in Jerusalem for eternity. That's what I want. That is what I want. His throne is set atop a mountain that is indescribably awesome and high in eternity. And those of us that know him not only will have great, great, great rewards, but, but each one of us gets a plot. Each one of us gets a space in this city. And I want to be as close to him as possible. I don't know about you guys. And that, that is the whole purpose of this parable, specifically to give us this broad spectrum of the reality of life. Everybody is one of these four seeds, right? Of the seeds that do want to do well, there is still very, very unfortunately, and I say that because I would love for everybody to have a hundred fold, but this is relative to your choice. This is relative to your desire. This is relative to your willingness to adhere to his word. And, and it's not simple. It's not easy. But again, if you have this burning desire and you've decided that this is what life is all about and it is, hold on to it. Grab, grab it as, as firmly as you can. Never let go. Be like Paul. See the goal. Run as hard as you can for the goal. Never look back. Never judge yourself. Always throw down your faults at his feet. Always look for his judgment. Always stay as close to him in fellowship as you can. And he'll get you through even the hardest times that seem like they're never going to go. They're never going to go anywhere. He's the one that leads us on to great rewards. We just have to be willing to do it. So if you want to be that fancy gigantic plant with fruit hanging off of it everywhere, it's up to you. Whether or not you have the gifts or not, that's a different story. But we all have the capacity for something great relative to what we were given and there's absolutely no reason not to shoot literally for the moon guys i'm gonna leave it there i don't want to go on too long i hope you guys understood this this is something that it burns in me and i'm angry with myself for taking so long but i also know that if i let that anger uh bubble and and and, and get at me too much i'm going to shortcut myself and uh not see the opportunities given to me and um I don't want to do that. And I, I hope I hope and pray for all of you that you're not doing that either because there is literally only one life here and there is one eternity coming and who doesn't want to show up with as much treasures in heaven as possible?
So glory to our Father. Thank you, Christ, for giving us a chance to make something of this evil world and this evil life. Yeah, let's do this, guys. Let's 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 do everything we can to be that hundredfold. Anyway, comment down below. Subscribe if you'd like. Comment. That's a big thing. When you comment, other people see the video more. Hit the bell. Uh, let me know what you think, guys. I, I hope this was useful. Talk to you soon.